Hey everybody, I haven't released many videos lately. Typically, in this situation, YouTubers post a bunch of apologies and promises about how they'll do better. I'm not going to do that, but you guys definitely deserve a quick update on why there haven't been that many videos lately. Uh, short answer is I've been pretty busy. In the past three months, I've had two major projects to work on. The first is getting my project car back on the road. It's a Toyota MR2 Spider, and it had a bad engine that needed replacing. Here it is, finally starting and running, and uh, here it is in the snow. I had to finish it under a tight deadline because of the second major project. I moved! My wife and I just moved about 180 miles to be closer to friends, including some of the members of Casual Shenanigans Gaming. We were excited to do it, but that does mean most of my free time has been consumed for a few months. I'm getting more settled into our new place though, so I'm excited to get back to Potato Masher reviews. First, I wanted to recap how its first year has been. A little over one year ago, the first Potato Masher video released. The result of a challenge on the Casual Shenanigans Gaming Podcast, it took two months to refine the concept, source parts, build the computer, test the first few games, and make that debut video. My hopes were that it would do decent traffic on Reddit and YouTube and maybe end up around 20,000 views if everything went well. Uh, well, I'm happy to say I was very wrong. The debut video has accumulated over 500,000 views as of January of 2016, and the playlist of Potato Masher videos is at well over 1 million views. My channel has had fantastic growth this past year, and I'm extremely grateful for the support and interest in the Potato Masher project. 2016 is going to be a fun year for game releases, but first I want to review how the Potato Masher did in its first year. Out of the 29 games I reviewed in 2015, most were multi-platform. The Potato Masher delivered a superior experience to the PS4 in all but four of these games. Battlefield 4 and Batman Arkham Knight had mild to severe memory leaks, and Call of Duty Black Ops 3 had a host of issues that were never fully addressed. Mortal Kombat X was also pretty much completely broken, although from what people tell me, it has gotten better since then. Resolution and frame rate were the primary advantages the Potato Masher consistently achieved over the PS4. Lighting complexity and shadow resolution were also usually superior on the Potato Masher. This is not to say the PS4 delivered a poor experience. With the exception of low frame rates in a few games, the PS4 is a great console so far and games typically look very good on it. The Potato Masher was also able to play most games at 1440p and quite a few at 4K. This honestly surprised me, but I'd be even more surprised if this continued far into 2016. The first year should theoretically be the Potato Masher's best year. PCs tend to surge ahead of consoles in power and processing capability, and game requirements follow suit. In 2016, I'm expecting the Potato Masher to play more games on medium or high, and less on very high. I also imagine that acceptable 4K performance will become very rare, and it will start to struggle at 1440p. This is okay, because the goal has always been to deliver a similar or superior experience to the PS4. So far, so good. Most viewers won't know this, but listeners of the Casual Shenanigans Gaming Podcast will remember that the Potato Masher hasn't just tested games this year. We've hosted our Arma 3 and Minecraft servers, and recorded and streamed the podcast. It did great at everything I've thrown at it, so I'll have to come up with more challenges for it in 2016. Next, I want to talk about our hardware choices. What we got right what we should have done differently, and what will we be changing going forward. Most of our hardware has been excellent. Our i5-750 processor is old, but a mild overclock has allowed it to easily keep up with modern budget processors that cost twice as much. Likewise, the power supply, hard drive, fans, and mouse and keyboard have been great so far. However, we messed up with the graphics card and memory. More specifically, I messed up. Since we didn't think the original Potato Masher video would go nearly as far as it did, we planned on researching and building just one hardware configuration. It was a cool project, but we thought it was going to be pretty small. Well, Sony and Microsoft probably test hundreds of variations of weak and powerful components to reach the best possible compromise between price and performance, and we probably should have at least tested different GPU and RAM options. Dave, the not-so-evil Evil Viking 13, and myself were pushing for not just equaling the PS4 performance, but crushing it. Because of this, we prioritized the GPU more than we should have, in retrospect. To their credit, the other podcast hosts, Joel and James, were pushing for 8GB of RAM and a weaker GPU. Dave and I went back and forth on this, but I ultimately made the call to go for a bigger GPU and 4GB of RAM. 
4K at 60 FPS in GTA 5 and rock solid Witcher 3 performance would seem to indicate that I made the right decision. 4GB of RAM has been plenty for every game I've tested so far, except the three that had numerous other issues. However, as good as the GTX 760 is, the Potato Masher probably would have benefited more from a GTX 660 Ti and 8GB of RAM. An AMD Radeon 7950 was also one of the cards we were considering, and it would have also been a good choice. Had we known how big the series would become, we would have spent more money and time testing multiple configurations to arrive at the best possible compromise. I take responsibility for this as I did the bulk of the physical work and fronted a good portion of the money, so the final decision lay with me. About three months ago, we started to seriously consider when and if the Potato Masher would need a RAM upgrade. It was still playing every game very well, but I had noticed a spike in actual RAM usage over the past year. It was only about 500 megabytes additional usage in most games, but it put the Potato Masher's RAM usage very high. Developers also started widely requiring 6 gigabytes or 8 gigabytes of RAM at a minimum. Even though the Potato Masher could still play most of those games with only 4 gigabytes of RAM, it's clear that the industry is finally starting to increase RAM usage and we want to be ready. We had the choice of seeing how far the Potato Masher would go with no changes or upgrading. The Potato Masher has always been a fun experiment first and foremost, and I've never claimed to be able to produce truly balanced and neutral testing parameters. I tried to approach this problem from the mindset of the hypothetical gamer who has built the Potato Masher and wants to use it for the next few years. In early November, there was a sale for compatible 4GB RAM kit. It dropped to $9 in price, and I had my answer. Any PC gamer who was worried about RAM usage would have snapped up that in a second, so I did. If you're concerned about me spending more money on it, the RAM upgrade was much less than one year of PlayStation Plus, which would have been necessary to play all the games I tested on the PS4 this year. The RAM is the only upgrade the Potato Masher will get, however. When the GPU, CPU, or any other part can no longer keep up with modern games, the experiment is officially over. So, starting today, the Potato Masher is now officially a $375 gaming computer. Yeah, I rounded the name up a little to make it easier to say, and the price doesn't include any rebates or big sales on the memory, to slightly appease the people who think this is all impossible to reproduce. Also, the $365 console killer doesn't really roll off the tongue as well as $375. When the next generation of consoles launch, I'd love to do a Potato Masher 2.0, with all new parts, a linked parts list that's updated and curated, and some other ideas that would make PC gaming even more accessible for people on a budget. Until then, I want to get the most out of the project. I'm excited about testing a ton of games in 2016, both current releases and requested classics. That brings me to how you can help. So far, there are two limitations to how many games I can test. The first is time. I'm a small business owner, husband, podcast host, and I have friends and hobbies that I really enjoy. An average Potato Masher video takes between 10 and 30 hours to film and produce, depending on the game. There's always a delicate balance I have to manage to be able to get things done. The second limitation is money. I would love it if my channel reached the point where I could get review copies of games to test, but so far I haven't had much luck. So I have turned to other means. I can rent PS4 games from Gamefly and Redbox, so while it's still a good chunk of money, I definitely don't have to buy every game I test. On the PC, I have to either borrow accounts from friends or subscribers, or buy the games myself. I don't like borrowing accounts from subscribers or people I don't personally know for their security and privacy. This severely restricts how much I'm able to accomplish. I want to test every game you suggested in the comments, but financially it's not realistic. I'm not allowed to talk about how much money I make off of YouTube, but look at my viewership and my subscribers and know that it's much less than you think it is. Uh, it's definitely not enough to fully fund what I want to do with this project, at least for now. So you guessed it, I'm creating a Patreon. After this meandering recap and preamble, I'll cut right to the chase. This project takes a lot of time and money. If I can raise money, I can spend more time on the videos and produce more of them. You can click the link on screen to visit the Patreon page and read more, but here are the basic details. I'll never hide any videos behind a permanent paywall. There are currently only two tiers of rewards to keep things very simple. If you pledge $1 per video, and that's per video, not per month, so make sure before you pledge anything, uh, I really appreciate it. If you pledge $3 or more per video, I will send you links to the new Potato Masher videos two days before they go public on my channel. 
I may eventually create additional tiers and milestone goals, but for now I want to focus on creating great in-depth reviews. I will use the money to purchase game codes for review and pay the rental fees for PS4 games. I would also like to pay back the casual shenanigans bank account for the amount it invested originally, since this project does primarily benefit my channel. Any additional money will be for my time. I won't charge for any previews of games that aren't ready for a full review yet, like betas and demos. If this Patreon doesn't make a dime, I'll still create videos as often as I'm able, so no worries there. As I'm wrapping the video down, I want to thank everyone who is a part of this. If you watch the videos, like them, comment on them, upvote them on Reddit, or in any way participate in the project, I appreciate you. This has gone a lot farther than I thought it would, and I want to keep going. YouTube can be a relentlessly demanding and stressful hobby at times, but it's very creatively fulfilling and it's usually worth it at the end of the day. I'm going to keep doing this as long as it's fun and as long as I can keep pushing myself creatively. Thanks for being here, thanks for supporting me, and have a great day.